Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about whether I would consider Antigua and Barbuda as a retirement place in the future. So if you follow me already, you'll know that I go to Antigua and Barbuda for three months of the year in the UK winter to, ex to escape the cold. I mean, it's really cold here in the UK nowadays. I've done this for a couple of years now. And I go there and I, I rent an apartment. I originally found it through Airbnb and now I rent it direct from the landlord. He looks after a lot of my stuff for me. So when I go there, I already have a lot of my personal belongings there. So it makes life, so I can make my home really cozy and make it really feel like a home from home. I have my photos there and everything. And then I hire a car and I drive myself around and I go to the big supermarkets there and I shop locally. I mean, I live like a local. I cook for myself and everything and I probably eat out once a week. But most of all, I enjoy the beaches. I mean, it's just swimming there is just amazing. The beaches are so beautiful and there are so many of them and they're all so different. So you know, there's a lot to say for this island. And I would say the, like the biggest pros for considering Antigua and Barbuda as a retirement destination are, well, firstly, it's English speaking. So if you're from the UK or the West and you don't know Spanish, which is difficult in some of the other Caribbean countries if you can't speak Spanish, English is the language there, so you, you'll be fully understood whatever you do, wherever you go. It was obviously run, you know, owned by England, the UK, um, in the past, so it has, quite, you know, quite a strong English feel about it, so you could certainly recognise the English elements in certain parts of it and in the historical buildings <clears throat> and then it's got a big influence of America on there as well so it's very easy to live there it's well developed it's very clean it's got big supermarkets so you can find everything that you want now you might not always find the exact brand that you want you you might find it in some of the big supermarkets you know most things you can but there's no problem with like shopping. You're going to find most of the things that you need or very good substitutions. These supermarkets are huge, they're brilliant. And you have lots of little ones as well. But you know, I've definitely had no problem finding anything that I want. And they drive on the same side as we do here in the UK. So <laughs> for us from the UK, it's dead easy. Americans, you've you got to switch sides, but it's, it's, it's just very straightforward. But, and the biggest, biggest pro, I would say, for Antigua and Barbuda is it's very friendly and everybody is very helpful there. You know, I've never had any issues there. I find it a very safe place to be. But the vibe is just so relaxed. Everybody is so chilled out. They're not running around like headless chickens. Um, just, you know, you, you probably heard the saying, oh, they're on Caribbean time. So, you know, things might not happen as fast as we're used to. But the problem is, in the UK, everybody wants everything done now. Everything has to be done the next second. It creates a really stressful way to live. I, th I just find it, there's no go slow in the UK. Everybody's rushing all the time. Everybody wants to get everything done yesterday. It's just not like that in the Caribbean. It's completely different. And you feel it as soon as you get off the plane. And it's just wonderful. You don't have to stick to a set plan. It's, I, I mean, I just love it. And, I, the, and the thing is, when I have to come home to the UK, I dread it because I know the minute I land at Heathrow, it's going to be stressful. So um, I would say that's the biggest draw of it. And, you know, if you're looking to retire, 
and you want a quiet life, a stress-free life, it's a brilliant, a brilliant option. <clears throat> and yes, the beaches are stunning and the snorkeling is great. And it's got some great historical sites and it's just a beautiful place to be. So now I've picked it up and I've told you what I absolutely love about it, would I retire there? Well, if it was simple to retire there, I probably would give it serious thought. But these are the reasons why it probably is not my final destination. Firstly, it, it is a bit more expensive than living in the UK. I mean, not massively, but I spend on average about £3,500 a month there. And that's a lot compared to some other countries that you can go and stay in. Now, granted, if you were living there full time, you would have a longer lease uh, rather than just three months. So you could negotiate better on that. <clears throat> you wouldn't be renting a car. You'd probably own one. Um, cheaper budget cars aren't exactly cheap there, but you may be able to pick something up uh, cheaper. And so you probably could cut cut your costs a bit but it's quite it is I would say not massively is it expense more expensive than the UK but it is certainly something you have to consider and over a course of 12 months that's quite a lot of money so you know you need at least 40 50 thousand pounds to live there and that kind of puts it out of reach for a lot of people and um and for me i mean when i as you know I'm, i want to go full-time traveling and i want to uh, live in places and I, I still want to go back to antigua but i'm going to have to couple that up <clears throat> with countries that are not expensive to sort of balance it out um so that's one of the big reasons and the other one is actually getting a residency or citizenship it's it's very difficult so to get a retirement visa for Antigua you have to have ha lived there legally for two years before you can apply for the I think it's a class E for retirement residency permit but how do you live there for two years before? Well, the only logical reason is to t take on the digital nomad um, uh, visa first for two years and then apply for a residency permit. Now, with a digital nomad visa, you're, obviously you're, they expect you to be working. It's not really for retirees. And you need to be making over $50,000 a year. Well... You need a very good pension then for that. Um, so it kind of puts it out of reach uh, for a lot of people that would want to go there. But if you are fortunate enough to be able to do that route and, and get a digital nomad and then move on to residency, once you've been in the country for seven years, you can then apply uh, for citizenship. And the other route is citizenship by investment, um, which, I mean, all the Caribbean countries have this program now, but the minimum that you need to invest there is $100,000. And we're talking US dollars here, not EC, otherwise it wouldn't be half as bad. And, and that's just to put into the fund for the government. If you want to buy a property, it's $200,000. And the fees are $37,500, you know, non-refundable. Not a lot of people have that sort of money. Um, I certainly don't have that sort of money. I'm not going to give over $100,000 just for the privilege of getting a citizenship somewhere. I don't have that kind of wealth. Um, so it kind of puts it, puts it out of reach for us. But you can get a visa on arrival for three months at uh, a time. And so that's what I've been doing and that's what I continue to do. Now, whether you can do visa runs backwards and forwards, 
I've never tested it. Um, maybe you can. Uh, I don't know how, how strict they are on that. And I have to be honest, I don't know. And if anybody does know, if it's easy to do visa runs back and forth to Antigua and Barbuda, please let me know in the comments. It'd be, I think we'd all like to know that. Because in some countries in Asia, it's, you know, it's just the dumb thing. But um, they're all cutting down on that now. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of not as easy as it was 10 years ago. So as much as I love Antigua and Barbuda, and I would love to live in the Caribbean, I always wanted to live in the Caribbean. Um, it's just not. It's not a retirement option anymore. It's, it's just it's too expensive. It's, it's a very complicated process. And that's quite sad, really. But, you know, when I go travelling, who knows what other places I'm going to discover and fall in love with. And I'm sure I'm going to find an affordable, beautiful place to live and retire to. It's not going to be the UK, unfortunately. I just can't see it being the Antigua and Barbuda. Unless I win the lottery, I can afford the citizenship and the cost to live there. <laughs> not likely, is it? Anyhow, that's why no, I don't think that's going to happen for me. And we're going to have to keep looking for a permanent home. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please subscribe and I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you.